Trump's market meltdown. The president frustrated and concerned tonight, worried about re-election, sources say, as he watched the Dow in free fall today. You see the number, 800 points down. The reason, a fluorescent red recession warning light now flashing for the first time since 2007, which was just before the great market crash and recession. A recession which it is important to remember was the worst since the Great Depression in the 1930s. The stock drop today, the biggest this year, the fourth largest point drop in American history. If you're just joining us, we closed at the session lows, down 800 points on the Dow. Fears of another recession causing panic. Breaking this evening, the big sell-off on Wall Street today. The Dow average plummeting 3%. Trump took to Twitter, sending nine tweets today about the economy, including trying to spin the plunge in interest rates into a positive. The president tweeting tremendous amounts of money pouring into the United States. People want safety. Well, the president is right about this. Money is pouring into U.S. Treasuries, but that, as he well knows, is not a sign of strength tonight. That is a sign of deep recession fears. The lower the yield on benchmark Treasuries, the lower the interest rates, the higher the fear of economic crisis. And today, the 30-year yield fell to its lowest level in history. Markets also afraid of Trump and China's trade war. And Trump took that head on today, too. The tweet, we are winning big time against China. Well, only time will tell on this, but as for winning right now, Trump's war with China is hurting the United States big time. Trump first slapped tariffs on Chinese goods in June of 2018, and compared to a year ago, U.S. exports to China fell 19 percent this July. Bad for us. Meantime, Americans bought more from China than they did a year ago. Trump knows the economy can make or break him. He knows this all too well. Just listen to Trump. Last year, for the first time in a decade, the United States was ranked the most competitive economy anywhere in the world. Yeah, I've made the economy so strong that nothing's going to stop us. We have the number one economy on Earth. Our country now has the hottest economy anywhere in the world. Our economy is fantastic. Well, that's not what the markets are saying tonight. And so Trump is blaming someone else, one of his favorite boogeyman, the Fed chief Jerome Powell, for the market freefall. Another tweet moments ago, China's not our problem. The Hong Kong isn't helping. Our problem is with the Fed. Why blame China when you could blame someone in the United States? Pamela Brown is out front live tonight in Berkeley Heights. Pamela, so the president obviously watching the markets extremely closely. That's right. He's been watching the markets extremely closely all week during his working vacation here in New Jersey. Aaron, uh, we're told that just as the markets have been on this roller coaster ride this week, so have the president's moves as he's watched the Dow go up and down. Uh, sources familiar say that initially yesterday the president was pleased uh, when his decision to back off those tariffs on China led to a bounce in the markets. But as we saw, that did not last long. Aaron, the president today has been airing his grievances on Twitter, directing his ire at the Federal Reserve. But we're told by sources behind the scenes that the president has been expressing concern, frustration that his negotiating team has not been able to strike a deal yet with China. There is concern that China is waiting uh, to see who is going to be elected next year. And also the president has been expressing concern that the trade standoff could hurt the economy and even his reelection chances. So certainly there are some jitters going on behind the scenes. I've been speaking to White House sources today who do say that there is some anxiousness about what is going on. And while uh, we may not be feeling the immediate repercussions, that what is happening right now in the world economy and in the markets could be a warning sign of what's to come, Aaron. So, so Pamela, let me just ask you, uh, obviously the president knows this is crucial uh, for his reelection, the economy. He looks at statistics. He knows full well uh, a recession could doom his reelection chances. And he brags about the economy every chance uh, he can get. So what does he do from here? Well, that's the question, and I've been asking White House sources that today because the president hasn't really provided concrete solutions of what to do, and he hasn't taken responsibility or acknowledged how the trade war with China might be playing a role in what we're seeing with the markets and the economy. I'll tell you, Aaron, that some officials I've been speaking with are sort of downplaying uh, what's going on. They're saying, look, it's August. A lot of people aren't working right now. I don't know that this is a good uh, way to look at what's to come. Uh, but in terms of what the president does next, that remains 
to be seen. A lot of it could hinge on how he deals with China and whether a deal can be reached, Aaron. And, and Pamela, on that deal, uh, w w what happens next on that? Obviously, as you say, he's frustrated with his negotiating team, but he's between a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. He threatened these tariffs, and now he said, oh, I'm going to delay them. He can't be the president who cried wolf. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's interesting, initially, you know, when the president imposed the tariffs, he said, look, the cost isn't going to be felt by the consumer here in the U.S. But then, as we saw, clearly he acknowledges uh, that it could impact the consumer, and that is why he held off on some of these tariffs on China um, for the Christmas season. But certainly the clock is ticking for a deal to be reached with the negotiating team. The president tried to downplay, even if a deal isn't reached, that it's going to be okay, that China really is the one suffering. You saw just in the last hour, I believe, he he tweeted about China saying that they're really the ones uh, suffering in all of this. And so it, we, we don't really know what is going to happen. It's sort of unpredictable. The president hasn't really laid out a plan for what he's going to do and how he's going to deal with the situation with China if a deal isn't struck. Again, sources I've been speaking with the in the administration say there is this real concern that China doesn't want to strike a deal right now because China wants to wait and see uh, who wins the election, whether President Trump is reelected re or if someone else wins.